a coronal hole rotates into the Earth's strike zone, promising us some fast solar wind. And a meteor shower causes a bolide explosion over Wisconsin. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week continues to be a bit on the disturbed side. We are coming down from a solar storm fizzle that occurred last week, but it did bring aurora down to many parts of the world. And as we switch to our front side sun, oh look, there's yet another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. And it could keep us at disturbed conditions and continue with this high latitude aurora over the next couple days. Plus, if you look, you can see a bright region that's kind of growing in the middle of that coronal hole. This uh, bright region does have solar cycle 25 polarity, so once again we are seeing consistent signatures of the new cycle. It isn't here yet, but we're getting stronger and stronger indications that it's just around the corner. As we switch to our far side sun, this is the view of the sun from stereo's view, and it's actually looking at the sun from the side. You can see the sun has been pretty much quiet. There's not any coronal holes and not a lot of bright regions, but over the course of the last 24 hours we see two bright regions that have emerged merged on the far side sun and this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders because it helps boost that solar flux and helps radio propagation hopefully get up out of the poor conditions. Did you catch the bolide explosion over southern Wisconsin on November 22nd? This is the view over Madison, Wisconsin captured by the University of Wisconsin AOSS rooftop cameras. The origin of this bolide is most likely the Alpha Monocerotids meteor shower that briefly turned into an outburst, the intensity of which has not occurred for more than two decades. Now, typically the Alpha Monocerotids, also called the Unicorn Meteor Shower, only produces a few meteors each year. However, on this night, conditions were very different. Astronomers Esko Leitinen and Peter Janiskins published a paper recently on the unusual meteor event, writing that the conditions are nearly identical to the outburst 24 years ago, which had about 400 meteors an hour. According to Leitinen and Janiskins, the outburst is caused by a dust released by a long-period comet, but the comet's identity remains unknown. Now, several eyewitnesses to the Wisconsin bolide said they saw a brief flash in the sky that came out of nowhere, and the bolide was so low that they even heard the explosion as it broke up over the water. Too bad the solar storm that was occurring at the same time wasn't strong enough to bring aurora down to Wisconsin that night. But some people at higher latitudes got lucky. Not only did they manage to catch the unicorn meteor shower, but they caught several of these meteors streaking through aurora-lit skies gorgeous. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the new moon on our way to a first quarter, and by the fourth, the moon will be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to check those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from that southern coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone right about now. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm, and this should last in through about the weekend before things begin to settle down. But this storm is not expected to be very strong, so unfortunately for those uh, aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled settled conditions, but really only about a 10% chance of active conditions. So likely aurora will not make it to mid-latitudes for this storm. The one positive thing is that with these weak storms happen, they oftentimes stabilize that upper atmosphere, which means good radio propagation for amateur radio operators and also good GPS reception, even on Earth's night side. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users very happy. The GPS reception on Earth's day side should be pretty top-notch. Now, we do have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk. They're not strong enough to be considered sunspots, but they are strong enough to be boosting the solar flux. We are now back 
back in the low 70s, which is the hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation on Earth's day side. And we have a couple more regions that are rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side. So this is going to keep the radio propagation, the solar flux, up into the 70s and keep us into the marginal range easily over this next week or so before things begin to tank. And that is great news considering with this solar minimum sun, we are itching for any bit of solar flux we can get. Now also because we are at solar minimum, the uh, cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is continuing to be a bit on the disturbed side. We do have some fast wind from a coronal hole in the southern hemisphere that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone now, but this fast wind isn't going to be all that fast and it's not really going to bump us up to storm levels. However, aurora photographers at high latitudes, you should be able to enjoy some aurora shows over the next couple days and possibly in through the end of the weekend before things begin to settle down. However, those of you at mid latitudes don't expect a show. We're really not expecting this uh, storm to be strong enough to give you much. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, things are actually looking up for you, right? Right now, we have a couple bright regions on the Earth facing disk and a couple that are rotating into Earth view, and they've managed to boost that solar flux up just a little bit to get us into the hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation. Plus, we have this weak solar storm that's coming through right now, and these disturbed conditions oftentimes help uh, radio propagation both on Earth's day side and on Earth's night side. So, you might notice that your uh, propagation is a little bit better than normal. And now, also, you GPS users. Well, you know, GPS reception on Earth's day side looks pretty top notch. And with these weak solar storms, well, that has a tendency to stabilize that upper atmosphere for you and even makes GPS reception at low latitudes and on Earth's night side pretty good. So as long as you stay away from Aurora and from those Dawn Dust Terminators, your GPS reception should continue to be pretty trustworthy. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.